Turn my thoughts within, dear Lord, for here is where you dwell, in your kingdom nestled in my heart, where everything is well. I turn my thoughts within, dear God, and find pure love and peace, harmony, the watchword here, apparent doubt and discord cease. For here is where I find the truth, there is one, the all in all, the truth that makes me free to be, I heed its every call. I turn within, dear Lord, for there you dwell, in my heart of hearts, where all is well, the love, the peace and joy that is spirit expressed, I find is me, dear God, and make manifest, I turn within, dear Lord, for there you dwell In my heart of hearts Where all is well The love, the peace and joy That is spirit expressed I find is me, dear God And make manifest I turn within, dear Lord Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Lifeline. I'm Sandra Cooper, and I'm your moderator for this evening's program, and it is a pleasure to welcome each and every one of you to this, what we call an hour of liberty, love, and laughter. We are the Temple of Life Center for Spiritual Living, and we are really, really looking forward to a very lively and, and exciting discussion this evening with our very special guest. But as we begin, every activity at the temple. I'd just like to ask Reverend Anshan to speak our opening affirmative prayer. Reverend Anne. Good evening, everyone. And let me add my own words of welcome to Professor Hutton, her very special guest this evening, and to all others who are joining us in consciousness. We recognize that infinite mind, that mind of God, which is indeed our mind now. We know that that mind that allows us to operate easily, effortlessly, and joyously, this perfect idea called lifeline, indeed this event that allows us to explore concepts and ideas that uplift and enlighten, we know that it is indeed a perfect idea whose time is now. So we know that everything that is raised in this hour long session is truly to the expansion of our awareness and consciousness as a people, as a community, as we know that Professor Hutton, in, with all that he will share this evening, will indeed allow us a deeper understanding of self and our role in the movement of our consciousness forward as a people, as well as to know that the legacy that is left is truly part of our existence and part of our history and indeed part of our future. So we just give thanks for this evening and know that each one of us is pure and open channels for truly ideas that indeed will allow us to move upwards, onwards on this upward spiraling pathway of life and love. I give thanks for this evening. I give thanks for every participant. And I know the law now demonstrates a perfect experience. This is the truth. I know that it is so. And so it, so, it is. so it is. So it is. Thank you so much, Reverend Anne. You know, friends, this time together uh, on, on the last Thursday in every month, um, it came about during, you know, the time, you know, sometime back in March, April of 2020, as an, you know, an answer to some of the challenges that we were, we were going through at the time when we just, you know, had to grapple with this thing called COVID. And we created this webinar series to provide spiritual tools and strategies to enable persons across all sectors to rise above and to consciously respond to the challenges being faced. Also to support persons to move from a fear-based way of thinking to a more faith-based way of thinking. And our guests have helped us to 
understand a little bit about who we are and our relationship um, to this universe and to life as it unfolds around us and indeed to understand really who we are and the power that we have that mm -hmm. guides us and drives us. And so this evening, we have a very, very special guest. And um, this is perhaps going to be one of the shortest bios that I might um, ever read because if we were to really share the full <laughs> details of our guest, we would probably be here until um, the end of the week. So he is Professor of Caribbean Political Philosophy, Culture and Aesthetics in the Department of Government at the University of, West, of the West Indies, Mona campus. And, you know, he has made a lot of significant and original contributions to the areas of Afro-Caribbean thought, Africana political philosophy, Caribbean philosophy, um, political philosophy, and so on, and so on, and so on. He has also delved into research around Rastafari, revival, voodoo, and the role of spirituality in the making of the Haitian revolution and the Moran Bay uprising, and also Caribbean art, creativity, aesthetics, healing, and freedom. This wonderful soul is also an artist, a poet, and a photographer. Ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to welcome our very special guest this evening, Professor Clinton Hutton. Clinton, welcome. You know, you can, you can unmute you know, so we can hear you. Yeah, thank you. That would help. And, and you know, <laughs> one would think, I mean, no, you're long, 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 long time. There's such a great vibe. And I am just happy to have you here. So the topic this evening mm -hmm. is spiritual awakening and black history, the links and the learnings. What, I'd love to hear your thoughts, you know, what links are there? What learnings do we have from our black history? And how is it, how has it facilitated our spiritual awakening? Okay, well, first and foremost, the, the, long, the longest history um, of human, uh, the, the 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 journey of humanity is that of Africa, mm -hmm. because civilization and hum humanity began in Africa, the human species. But we are really concerned here now, first and foremost, with the the last um, five hundred or so years, in which time. Um, many Africans were taken away from Africa by force um, and up toward to independence in 1962 Jamaica has um, had 468 years of foreign rule first the, the um, Spanish mm -hmm. and then the British and um, of those 468 years, 329 of those years were years of enslavement. Mm -hmm. Africans were enslaved in Jamaica for 329 years. 329 years of working without pay. 329 years of horrible, horrible suf sufferings unspeakable suffering. People were forced to eat human excrement. People were forced to drink urine. People were forced to eat the flesh of their fellow enslaved persons. Um, these were, I mean, and the records are there to show. So the issue is, how did the enslaved persons responded, or the enslaved Africans responded to their enslavement after so many generations. Well, one, for one, they, they, they dig deeply 
into their ancestral culture, ancestral spirituality, and ancestral philosophy. That's how they survived slavery. And what has happened is that ancestral spirituality, ancestral ways of doing art, visual arts, music, dance, were applied in the condition in which Africans um, were placed. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the foundation of Jamaican culture and, and Jamaican spirituality begun there. Not only begun there, but it continued throughout slavery to emancipation, to independence. And sometimes we don't know that. But let us take the issue of, of death rituals, rituals involving wakes and funerals. The songs that were done by our forebearers during slavery in the 18th century, for example, um, were songs about going back to Africa. The songs that were sung during funeral rituals were songs about going back to Africa. Few of those songs survived to this day. Mm -hmm. right? And um, the important thing about it, that tradition, which I called repatriational re freedom, continued in Jamaican music um, after emancipation into the 20th century and reach a high pitch in Jamaican music after independence, especially in reggae music. Mm -hmm. right? So songs like Sata Masagana, for example, is a song about going back to Africa. Bob Marley's, um, Bob Andy's Got to Go Back Home is another example. Move Out of Babylon is another example. Uh, so so we, have, we have those songs. And what you are getting from those songs is a connection between our lives today and the, 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 um, the anti-colonial struggle the anti-colonial resistance of our forebearers. From the very first day of slavery, we had anti-slavery resistance. Mm -hmm. there, is not, there is not one without the other. And the, the, the culture of resistance that we, we got in Jamaican music and we, we have in revival or further afield, we have in, in Santa Rea, or what is called Lukumi by the people themselves, or in Mayombe, or Orisha, or Vudun. Um, those spiritual movements played a critical role in the anti-slavery uprisings. Big, big role in the Haitian Revolution. Big role in the Taki uprising big role in small and large um, insurrections and other forms of resistance. So when we get to 1973, and I'm saying this because my, my reading of the situation is, and I can say it without reservation, the most important path cutting ideas about how independence should proceed, first came out of our musicians, first came out of our songwriters, first came out of our singers. And so, for example, you have in 1973, the whalers doing a song called Catch a Fire, otherwise known as Slave Driver, in which the whalers song, in part, a song written by Marley, every time I hear the crack of the whip, my blood runs cold. 
I remember on the slave ship how they brutalize our very soul. Today they say we are free only to be chained to poverty. So here in 1973, we see a direct link between how we should develop in, in independence and the ideas of our, of our forebearers and that there is this link. When, when, when it says, when the song says, every time I hear the crack of the whip, Marley, the whalers, Peter Bonnie, they were not enslaved. They were not born then. But they are making a connection that the poverty that face, that faces uh, the, the Jamaican people after independence was not a poverty created by them. It was the legacy of British and Spanish enslavement and colonial subjection. It was an enforced poverty. It was a poverty due to hundreds of years of working people without pay and using their creativity and their ingenuity and their labor power to create wealth to build the European and in our case, especially the British um, infrastructure, their economy, their banking system, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Over one million persons were brought to Jamaica uh, and enslaved. Ooh. One one million three hundred thousand. And when and when slavery was abolished after three hundred and odd years, only three hundred and odd thousand persons remained. The black population was unable to reproduce itself. So slavery itself was a form of genocide in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And we see that link in, in songs like, like um, Catch a Fire. Mm -hmm. Every time I hear the crack of the whip, my blood runs cold. I remember on the slave ship how they brutalize our very soul. Now, what this song is saying since since Marley, since Peter Bonnie, since they were not there, what they were they were making that link to ancestry nonetheless. Mm -hmm. yeah. Merchant ship. Minutes after they took I from the bottomless pit. But my hand was held strong by the hand of the Almighty. We forward in this generation triumphantly. Again, we see the, 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 the idea there of ancestry being linked to our existence today. That we are them and they are us. That's how it's posed in the song. It is also posed. It is, it is also posed. In, in the song uh, by Burning Spear, do you remember the days of slavery? Yeah. How they beat us, how they work us so hard. And right? so we see that. And we see it in Peter Touch's song. Mm -hmm. um, I, am the, I am a man of the past, living in the present, walking to the future. Right? So, so that is a strong philosophical notion of philosophy and of existence, and of identity. Not just in Jamaican music, which, which, which portray that in a lot of ways, but as but, but we see it in many areas of Jamaican life. Right? And that is precisely why, even before um, reggae and, 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 and the influence of Rastafari in that, and their influence came among other people, from among other things, from revival. Mm -hmm. And revival people, they have feast. Feast, feeding their ancestors. They had feast with their ancestors. In fact, there was a feast before the Morant Bay uprising, the night before, in Stony Gut. There was a feast, two feasts, that started the Asian Revolution, feasting with the ancestors. So you see revival table today, which 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 is about that. So there's there's that link 
between uh, Jamaica and Africa, that, that we cannot progress. We, we, cannot, we, we cannot journey on the path of sovereignty and freedom without the connection, integ integral connection with Africa through our ancestors. Okay. Wow, a lot of food for thought. One of the things that comes to my mind as um as I listened um is it is a business of past, you know. I think it's Peter Tosh's song that you spoke of. Man, I'm a man of the past, living in the present, walking into the future. Yes. And we, we know how heavy one's past can be in terms of um, creating limitation in terms of what we feel we can or cannot do. And yeah. so we would we would say that um, we, as far as the past is concerned, um, all of this has had a tremendous impact on us as a, as a people. And I'm still hearing people today talk about you know, boy, you know, my broke, my pop down, can't come to nothing. And there's a negativeness. What is it that will take us to move from that? Because there are persons who are who are saying, in spite of, they have rise triumphant. As, as you say, we forward in this generation triumphant. So what is it that will take the majority of our people to, to, to um, break those shackles of mental slavery? Um, you know, um, person, the person who put it best um, is uh, Marcus Garvey. Mm -hmm. But that tradition has always existed mm -hmm. in in Jamaican uh, African Jamaican philosophy. Um, so, so what is the biggest um, uh, path to to blow through the the, the 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 issue of of being victim and living as victim? Uh, we, we certainly should not live as victim. Mm -hmm. um, but we cannot be free and cannot change the world outside of us if we fail to change the world within us. Mm -hmm. The world within us that was, uh, that was created and internalized, created by colonial thinking. And, and 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 people recognize that from a long while ago in 1865 for example there, there's a there's a there's a slogan in the Paul Bogle movement and the slogan is called is 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 is, is um is is uttered this way black skin white heart the same thing we call rose breadfruit in 1865 Paul Bogle were talking about Black people were in their in progress because although their skin was black, their heart was white. Which, which of course, later on, um, the the scholar and psychiatrist from Martinique, uh, Franz Fanon, wrote a book called Black Skin, White Heart. Right? Okay. So, 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 the, so, what is it? It is. It depends on our education system, mm -hmm. both formally and informally. And what if, if we are honest, the formal, the informal education system is more progressive than the formal education definitely, system. Definitely. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so we are talking about four hundred and sixty-eight years up to nineteen sixty-two. Yes of an education that was dominated by European notions of the world, notions of themselves in the world, and notions of the role of black people in that world. We were socialized to believe in the superiority of, the in, of, be of beauty, of mind, of intellect, etc., etc., of Europeans. And especially of the British. No, I think it was it was a, it's a song in Mali which says, two thousand years or whatever of history cannot be wiped away so easily." 
and he was talking about the history of, of, of Africans. We don't learn that history in, in our schools no, in Jamaica. Not at all. We, we did not begin Africans and the African diaspora, including mm -hmm. Jamaica, did not begin with the enslavement of Africans. African, African existence is thousands of years. Thousands of year, years contributing to the, the, the intellectual framing mm -hmm. of, of, of humanity in many fields. Mm -hmm. right? The first writing system in the world came out of out of Egypt, which was a black civilization, right? <laughs> All those the, the modern science and modern engineers and modern technology have so far not been able to tell us exactly how the pyramids were built mm. to this day, but they were built by ancient Egyptians. And to build those pyramids require that you have an important grounding in mathematics, both theoretical mathematics and practical applied mathematics. Right? And that is just one area. So that mm -hmm. the edu our education system has to become more progressive. In as the way the education system is to a great extent. It's not fully so, mm -hmm. but to a great extent is is really perpetuating the type of philosophy that kept down our forebearers. And 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 ends when 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 um Garvey in his 1937 speech um, in Canada mm -hmm. talks about um, you know maybe there are people who can free us from the chains, physical chain mm -hmm. but, but, but it is we who have to liberate ourselves from mental slavery because none but ourselves can free our mind to what extent is that taken on into the education system to what extent is education liberating? And I, I know I'm talking about the, the three R's, really reading, writing, writing, writing arithmetic, yeah, but I'm also yeah. talking education beyond that. Education does not be just the three R's. Education is far more important than that. Right? And so the issue is that the education system has to be, the education system has to to really serve us. Mm -hmm. I am strongly of the belief that many of our young people, and because they show it in the form of violence, many of our young people, boys especially, killing each other, they have not a clue who they are. Mm -hmm. and, the, and what will tell them who they are and help them to discover themselves. And for Garvey, the, the first principle in Garvey's philosophy is, is self-discovery. Yes. You know, That's the um, first principle. Yes. Um, a couple of comments in the chat, um, but just to share with you, one of the tenets of our philosophy is um, change your thinking, change your life. And there's um, another that we have that says, our, our purpose is to awaken humanity to its spiritual magnificence. Um, and so this is this is a foundation foundation on which our teaching um goes. So yes, the education yes. is critical. Yes. Um Carol Charlton says we have to scrub the collective DNA. Yes. Because some of us truly believe that we can't do better. This is this, this is my lot and this is how it is. So we we, we beat down Babylon and not stop to think that um, we're also beating down ourselves, you know. Um, guys, please put your questions in the chat or, you know, feel free. You know, it's a small group of us. Um, 
if you if you just I want you to ask a question yes, though. Reverend Anne. Mm -hmm. yeah. education is for the purpose of bringing forth that's what edu carry that when you break it down yes it's to bring forth that is that which is within us within us we have the innate intelligence but isn't then there the current system that we have there must be some fear there mm -hmm. that if we are able to bring forth the talents and the abilities and the skills that we have in it, then there's something to fear about us as a people. I, because if you are, what you see where I'm going, because education is supposed to facilitate, yes, yes. facilitate that, it doesn't. Yes, 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 yes. And you want mental slavery, mental slavery in the sense that you have to be able to be, have an authority in how you think and who you are. Yes. But our education system does not shape us mm -hmm. to know that we are persons of worth. We are persons of value. Yes, yes. And, and the and, skills. Yes. yes and, um, and, you can and take so, it from there. Professor. Yes, yes. No, I, I, you're absolutely right. And um, the informal system, as I said, is more progressive. But it also has its problem. Because it is in the informal, well, it's in both system. When 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 you are unable to go to school because your hair grow differently from other people, and therefore it might it might it might attract lice. Hair that stand, that grows standing attracts lice, right? And must be cut short. But other persons who hear whose hair grow differently don't have to cut short. And it is like in the informal system when a, 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 a black boy would say to a black girl, you know, you look good for a black girl. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so, so we, we have what I call the, for, for, for under the, under British rule, we have had, and Spanish rule, we have had um, all sorts of rituals of desecration of the black body. But many of us internalize that mm -hmm. and, and desecrate it ourselves. We become desecrators of our own bodies in the language, in the meanings of our colonizers. <laughs> right? So, 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 so that Jamaica became independent in 1962. And in 1962, one of the things that our, our first independence government did with 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 support from the opposition was to cut out the holiday uh, um, that of forebearers used to, to um, celebrate yeah. emancipation day we cut it out for decades the good thing is that while that was officially not 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 um not not marked many of our people continue to to do so in their communities and in special places Mm -hmm. So that education is absolutely important. Education, I can't, it cannot be overemphasized, mm -hmm. the importance of education. You know, and, that... and, and then if you study the education system itself, mm -hmm. there has always been a struggle. Well, teachers who have been trained at Michael, many, many of them broke out of the, the colonial way of thinking. Dudley Thompson being one of them. Mm -hmm. Dudley Thompson went to Michael in 1934, um, a year after Garvey's second son was born. And who will turn 90, uh, I was with him yesterday, will turn 90 in, in August, August 16. <laughs> right? His father born August 17. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so, so there's always been the struggle. But the, as a nation, one of the things that we should have done was to have meetings all across Jamaica of reflection of our past 468 years. What happened to us? And you hear me, us, we are our ancestors, our ancestors mm -hmm. are, right? So, so the 460 odd years, what, what, what happened? What, what were the consequences of those 460 odd years? Mm -hmm. and, and therefore, have a national take as to how to, 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 to do education. Mm -hmm. 
right? And I'm talking about all branches of education. I mean, when, when, when my son was, I mean, my son went to, to Campion, uh, when he was doing math, and I look at his work, and then I saw the thing as if math was a European creation. That is absolutely rubbish. So I had to go and search and get books for him that talks about the history of mathematics. You're going to do maths, you need to know about the history of mathematics. Right? Uh, and it's so for many things. Mm -hmm. But they, the, there are many of our people who are great achievers, and we don't even know. There are many things that happen, in, including some of the cutting edge technology of today and inventions of today Definitely. that we assume somebody wise. have been done by white people. Mm -hmm. We assume it, we, we take it for granted that that is the case. Because of how we feel, think and feel about ourselves, right? But some of the some of the most important inventions of the twenty, the twentieth century, and the twenty first century, and the nineteenth century, not to speak about ancient times, were done by African or people of African descent. But we, we take it for granted. And that is why I insist that when we teach about those things, we need to say who made them. Yes. Yes. Because if we don't, they will take it. Most will take it for granted. That is not anybody that looked like them could have done those things. Mm -hmm. And that is why, again, the notion of self-education is so important. My belief is, and it's considered I've been in the teaching profession almost all of my life. Mm. I started teaching from age 16 and I haven't stopped. I've been in the classroom either as a teacher or a student. Right? So, so my view is one of the first and most important things that we should we, we should endow in our students is to develop their capacity for self-education. For self-education, the capacity to teach themselves to learn. Self-directed learning. The capacity to become a sovereign learner. Because guess what? There are problems with the formal system that we have to change as parents and as a, as, a, as, as a country in our different associations and organizations. Mm. It can't just be left up to government. But, but if I may... Nothing will change. If I may interrupt there, though, Prof. You know, um, some of the teachers don't want to be pushed that way. So when a student, you know, develops a sense of autonomy around his or her own learning, and they come and they challenge the... Um, authority in this in the classroom um they often get pushed back i got pushed back but that was a long time ago yes. and it's still happening now how do if the, the system doesn't change um the, uh, <laughs> how is it going to make a difference yeah you know it, it, it has to make a difference because we have to make it a difference mm. right and what you just described many many young people face that mm. that they, they, that that part of the problem is 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 our, some of our teachers mm -hmm. who continue the the, the 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 way of thinking and knowing the epistemology of colonialism, right? And um and in fact, the, what you describe is you are describing the teacher behaving towards the student okay, massa. as massa. Yes, that's that's pre that pretty that is pretty much how the teacher is behaving. Correct. How dare you? Right? When what we should do is encouraging Correct. students to explore, exactly. to search, and to find yes. for themselves, as 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 Peter Touch would, would have said in Mama Africa. You know, I search and I found you, Mama. How are you doing, Mama? Right? You have to search. We should encourage our students to search. For one, because it's the right thing to do. Because as an individual, 
you should you, you do you will not have a teacher all all times to tell you what is what mm -hmm. and, and and to tell you what is what without you discovering and without you with you you critically reading and critically yes. analyzing and and critically debating without you doing that you don't have any power yes you are you are you you are the power that you can get from education is the power of to be a self educator yeah. the power to search and to find yes. the power to ask critical questions the power to debate the power to read as if reading is a part of your breathing wow love that we have a couple um comments in the chat and then we have um steve has a question let me just quickly cover the chat um um carol says what bothers me is that we have more than a full grasp of our dilemma, but can't seem to create, um, can't seem to create a vision of the path out of it. Um, Reverend Anne says, I agree with Carol, possibly the informal system should be directed to empower the music of our culture. Um, sorry, let me, let me say this again. Possibly the informal system should be directed to empower. And then she says, the music of our culture must then be the classroom to develop strategies um, um, slash our stories so that our young people can clarify their heritage. Um, so those are just two comments. And then um, Steve, he has his hand up. So uh, do we take Steve's question or you comment on this first and then we go to Steve? Yeah, well, I, I, I agree. The, what, what, what I'm trying to insist in the education system by my writings and by my, my talks and so on is to encourage our educators to adopt part, some of the elements, important elements of the informal system into the formal system. Mm -hmm. Part of liberating pedagogy, the science of teaching, Mm -hmm. Part of doing that is is to is to is to to include in the formal system elements important elements of the informal system, yes. and, and one of the areas that that is best could best deal with that. We have we have the the informal education in music is superior to the formal education in music in Jamaica today. Mm -hmm. Far superior, right? And, and but we don't, we, we don't include that. Mm -hmm. many, many, many of our, our musicians, our songwriters, et cetera, et cetera, they, they did not learn the thing in a formal setting. They learn it in the informal system, right? right? And therefore, what, in, what is in that that we are able to bring to, for example, the teaching of music? What is Bob Marley's composition style? Mm -hmm. what, is, what, what is Bonnie Whaler's composition style? What is Lieutenant Stitch's comp composition style? Mm -hmm. Et cetera, et cetera. I, is it relevant to teach it in our music? How does Toots create songs, lyrics? Bob Andy, et cetera, et cetera. Are those, and, and we go to the musicians. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I, you know, so... So it's important. Yes, Steve. Steve, your turn. Yes, I'm, yes, I'm here. I'm here. It's interesting that you um you ended on that last point, um, Prof, because um just a few weeks ago, reasoning with Mikey, um, I don't remember if it was Kwame or Colin Channel, one of them teaching in a high school in Kingston. Um, <clears throat> used Marley, and as you know, both those authors are quite successful. And the um investigation of Marley's rhythms and well, certainly lyrics, you know, form a deep, a very integral part of their of their teaching mechanisms. Yeah. One of the things is that, as you say, the formal system refuses to recognize or accept or integrate this kind of work. But um, we, we blame the education system and as maybe we should, but we have to look at the role of media 
right? Um, I know of several very brilliant musicians who are all now employed in corporate in the corporate world because of the turn that the media and the change from our cultural expression, the change of our rebellious expression as far as music is concerned, to the quote-unquote arms house, right? Nothing to do with the music, but more lyrical content, but that's a different discussion. Yes. So then in speaking about music, we must be very careful, mm -hmm. you know, to make a distinction because it is the music that moves us, yes. Mm -hmm. But the move to um, glorify the arms house was quite deliberate. It was a political decision. And until there is some kind of admission, there can be no reconciliation, you know. So we must be very careful when we um, offer criticisms in that area. And I'm not necessarily speaking about this forum, but just generally speaking, right? Because we really need to look at ourselves in a socio-political light and say, why are we pushing these things to what end? And the matter of serving Bakra Master in his, even in his absence is a very serious one. And the, 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 the whole thing about looking into ourselves, it, it for example, there's a video making the rounds right now with a, with a black mom, very concerned. This lady works with the CIA. Mm -hmm. And she just happened to exchange roles with her husband one day and looking at what her child is doing for homework and she's so distressed so your child have problem with maths right you can find a maths teacher your brethren used to teach maths and thing and thing and thing and when they go to school they will still solve the mathematical equation so they can't get an x a red x across them work but in the matter of history in the matter of our story when they are fed this diatribe and these lies, and a Clinton, Houghton, or a Sandra Cooper, or a Shan said to them, child, no, sir, and also it did go. When they go to class and answer the questions on the paper, that answer is no wrong. What are we to do about that type of dilemma? Yeah, I mean, you make some very good points. But you see, that the last point there is what you need active parents mm -hmm. who monitor their children and uh, which i i do to my my two children um but what it needs to be done there are some parents who probably would be unable but i also know that in in longer times even when the parent couldn't read the child has to come and read mm -hmm. right and therefore the discipline is there and all of that to, and to show the seriousness of um of what uh, of learning of education right um I, I like the way you put that about bakra perpetuate bakra in the absence of bakra <laughs> i mean that's a that's a good formulation because let me let me read for you what a planter said um in the in the 18th century uh slaveholder policy and safety require that we crush the race of blacks by a contempt so great that whoever descends from it, even to the sixth generation, shall be covered with an indelible stain. You have just, you have just summarized that. We, bec we become Bakra's mind in the absence of Bakra. Mm -hmm. and perpetuate our own enslavement because of the desecration of our minds. Yes. And, and therefore, our education system must be very conscious of these things. But guess what? We spend most of our in time of independence <laughs> doing a number of things. Because there are, there are still powerful people who are opposed to the teaching of history. Mm -hmm. when, I, when I teach certain subject matter to my students, a common a refrain from my students, sir, 
How come we never know these things? Because they have been deliberately hidden from them. And, and when it can't be hidden anymore is when that student or those students become self-educating. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> yes. Prof, we have about, ooh, about 10 more minutes. And we have okay. two questions. Yeah. Um, um, I, I, just, I just thought of this, this, the, the words of this song that says, um, what, what was hidden from the wise and prudent, no, prudent, no to, reveal to the babe and suckling. Babe and suckling. So, so we will, um, there is that, there is that part of us that is really hungry yes. and will, um, make the learning happen. All right. Let me go to Carol very quickly. And then, um, Suzanne. So Carol, go ahead. Yeah, I think we you I think um we've actually passed the, the the point in the discussion, but I nevertheless will um in terms of of methodology, I recall um many years ago being told by my son when he was in high school that you know the the the, the learnings would be more interesting if the teachers use the music to teach it. I didn't appreciate it at the time, but I know in the, in the course of this, this discussion, I can appreciate mm -hmm. how effective mm -hmm. the use of the music could be. Mm -hmm. Because at that time, I remember I, I'm in the car and I'm saying, turn down that thing. And he said, mom, listen to this. And what I heard was, what if, what's his name singing? Look into my eye. What, if, what do you see? And now I'm realizing no, that, <laughs> you know, and now I'm realizing mm -hmm. that, you know, somebody needs to listen to them. Mm -hmm. I wasn't listening. There, there, there's a, <laughs> sorry. Sorry, I'm there, there's, a, there's a song, there's a, oh, there's a song by, by the Whalers, written again by Bob Marley, called Music Lesson. Mm -hmm. And this is, it says music gonna teach them one lesson. And and what was in that lesson is the fact that mm. in our education system, the teaching of our connections with Africa was not there. And it was precisely this absence that that song was talking about. Mm. Music gonna teach them one lesson. So, yeah. so, so that, uh, and in fact, it's fairly similar to Peter Touch, Can't Blame the Youth. Mm -hmm. Right, so 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 we have and we have Justin Hines again, um, in in the late sixties talking about, um, talking about knowledge, um, and saying that in in our refrain in the song that the greatest thing is to know, what you don't know you don't know the greatest thing is to know. Awesome. Right. So 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 there there are many songs like out there talking about the philosophical side of teaching as well as the as well as the, 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 the teaching side of teaching the the, the, the method method side yeah. of, yes, of yes. teaching right so so, so um uh -huh. okay so simple, i think we still despite 60 years many things will change but if you don't deliberately do it consciously do it a hundred years will come 200 years will come. Oh. And we're still okay, thanks. It has to be deliberately done. Thanks. Okay. Um, Susan, yours will be the last question. Thanks, Carol. Thanks, Prof. Um, Susan. Yes, um, uh, Prof. Hutton, I just want to raise the issue of the way in which fear has been used as a means of control. And that that is part, I think, of the legacy that has been handed down is not only the, the um, positions or that the colonizer's culture is superior, yeah. but also that one should fear things from the African culture. So African spirituality, African music, African dance, um, all of these things are to be feared. And then tied to that, where you talk about needing to teach people how to be sovereign learners, there is nothing more dangerous and threatening 
mm. than a person controls their own mind and who is on a path of exploration, self-awareness and growth. Therefore, many of the things that we see as um, uh, as supposedly strengthening and getting educating people are not in fact structured with that intent. Similarly, often religion is not structured with the intent of freeing and gr growing people in self-awareness, but rather ways to control them. To the so fear of hell. Exactly. So I don't know if you have any response to that. Mm -hmm. No, my response is simple. I agree with you 100%. It is, it is true. Um, and there's a fear, not only inst instill fear about, about Africa in, in us, that we must expunge, um, and, and which led the colonial police upon young boys mm -hmm. and young men in the 19, early 1920s which led some of them to form gangs as a collective type of security against the, the colonial police force, which were led by white men, right? Uh, because it was, it was believed that, that, that Africa, barbarous Africa, mm -hmm. was, still, was, was pretty much in, in, in young men, more than any group of other Jamaicans. Right, it, and therefore it has to be beaten out of them. Right, oh, um, it, it, you must it, it must be arrested out of them. Right, because they stand against progress by holding on to these barbarous things, these the, the, these the, these uh, these savage type of expressions. Right. And so what has become, I suppose the intention is good, but, but it has become a way of, of tying our people, um, the, the concept of out of many one people, having, 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 having destroyed, having um, abolished the, 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 the uh, emancipation day, then you have a national motto which says out of many one people. But the out of many one people, and I've studied it, it's really a suppression of the black majority in terms of their, their, their cultural and philosophical bearings. That this is an endurance to Jamaica becoming a modern civilized nation. And the best way to deal with that is to weed it out. Wow. <laughs> okay, wow. This has been, we, we could go on for another hour, perhaps. This conversation has been so rich. Uh, I know certainly one of the things I, I got out of it was um, the, the importance of self-education. That even well, those of us who have access to children, perhaps we can start the ball rolling, you know, um, with a one-one coca full basket. So if we can encourage any child, any young person to, in, to, to inquire for themselves. Um, my son is blind and he, because of how he struggled as a visual impaired person in the school system, um, he did not learn well in school. That didn't affect yeah. the quality of his ability to learn. And so now as an adult, he is just sucking up information because the, the, the technology um, makes information so easy to access for, for the blind. His phone is his lifeline. And yeah. so um, young people need to be given the right and the power to learn for themselves. When they ask a question, mommy, what is so-and-so? Just ask, just turn it back to them. What do you think? I also got that this work has to be very it has to be consciously done. It has to be deliberately done. We can't sit on our verandas and just talk about it. Those of us who have influence need to really exercise that influence and um, facilitate the, the change. Um, I heard a term today, which I thought very, very apt, that we, in our education, we need to move from being the sage on the stage to being the guide on the side. 
And this should be the role of our teachers, our those of us who have, a, um, you know, the, the awakening consciousness to support others in also facilitating the awakening of their own consciousness. Wow, oh, we could go on and on. Um, I, I mean, Reverend Anne, I'm going to ask for you to just, you know, do a, a quick thank you. And then Susan, I'm going to ask you at the, at, um, when Reverend Anne is through, if you can do our closing treatment. I haven't heard you for a long time and it's a pleasure <laughs> to have you. You know, I had an ulterior motive getting you here this evening, <laughs> Reverend Anne. <laughs> Professor Hutton, it has been a, a tremendous experience of rich information and knowledge for us as a spiritual community in our informal ways to ensure that our young people are taught how to discover themselves in an informal, whether we use music, drama, art, whatever creative expression we can use to encourage them to recognize who they are men and women with a future standing tall in the, i mean taking along instead of standing in the shadow was taking along the our the requisites from our ascendants or you know we are indeed our um our ancestors mm -hmm. we teach one mind so within that mind which we all use everything that is necessary as attributes for us to move forward upward and onwards is there Thank you so much for this um this evening. It has been truly wonderful. And thank you all for coming and sharing in this really rich sharing of consciousness and information. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you, thank you Reverend yes. Anne. And a special thanks, by the way, to um, our tech team, Steve and Vance, for making um, this experience happen. Um, Susan, it's all over to you. In this moment, I recognize the power and presence, the light and life of all creation. And I'm knowing that this one is pure light. And I know that this light is awareness, is consciousness. And this light fills the minds, the beings of each and every one of us present, of each and every one of us within the sound of my voice. And I know that this light guides us in our thinking. I know that this light empowers our curiosity. I know that this light awakens us to the power within, awakens us to that journey of growth and unfoldment. I know that there is nothing that can hinder the expression of this light, for it is God. We are one with God, and God is all there is. Right here and right now, I recognize that we are on a journey of growth and unfoldment. We are on an exciting journey. Knowledge, wisdom, joy and understanding. We are guided to the sources of the knowledge, the information that we see. We allow ourselves to ask questions, seek answers with a sense of freedom and joy. And we share all who we come in contact, this sense of light expanding, filling our space, touching each and every process that we are engaged in. And right here and right now, I give thanks for the sharing this evening. I give thanks for the wisdom, the light that is Professor Clinton Hutton. I know that he shines as a beacon, sharing his understanding, his knowledge, his wisdom in a field that expands and ripples and touches and inspires those people, known and unknown. Thanks for this shared experience this evening, knowing that it was an experience of pure light, and each of us takes from it 
that which we sought. I give thanks. I release my words to the law in their fulfillment, knowing that it is so. And so it is. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Until we meet again on the last Thursday of March, we will have another very, very interesting and exciting guest to discuss a, a, a topic that is scintillating and fun and, you know, eye-opening. We thank you all very much, and we see you then. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you all.